everybody. It's Drew from Langley's Vital Nutrition Center here with you. Thank you for watching this video. I say it a lot, but I mean it every time I say it. Our subscription rate is at an all-time high and means the world to us that y'all care about what we're doing with this channel, so thank you. In today's video, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about polycystic ovarian syndrome. I want to talk to you about some of the underlying reasons that we see symptoms worsen and improve and we often don't know why that change takes place. I also want to talk to you about why guys tend to not have any of the same kind of problems but just like a male version of it. The first thing I want to say whenever I talk about polycystic ovarian syndrome is how frustrating it is. I've worked with a number of clients over the years who are dealing with this and they seem to find a solution and it's temporary and they get relief from symptoms, and it doesn't last long. So one of the big parts of polycystic ovarian syndrome that I've seen is that we have to acknowledge that there are a lot of different parts causing it. It is not just an issue with the ovaries. And I want to draw some attention to that in this video today. So I want to break down these words, polycystic ovarian syndrome. First, poly means many. Cystic, or cyst, means a collection of fluid, a little encapsulated collection of fluid. Next, ovarian, meaning the ovaries. And syndrome, meaning it's something we expect to have continued. It's some part of our existence, something we should have forever once we have it. I don't like calling it that, I'm just letting you know what it means. So, I'm just going to write, we got it, next to it. Okay? So by this title, we would expect that there are many collections of fluid on the ovaries, and we got it as long as we have ovaries. Okay? Now, what I want to talk to you about are some of the symptoms about PCOS. There's fatigue, there's irritability, there's often mood swings, and there's weight gain with that. And then to differing levels, we can also see that the menstrual cycle is affected or interrupted. When we're dealing with all these different symptoms, it is very unlikely that there is just one part of our body that is dealing with dysfunction. And that's why I don't like the idea of calling this just an ovarian syndrome. Because typically in clinic, when I'm working on these cases, I see that it is a system-wide issue. When we talk about fatigue, usually the adrenal glands are related. You've heard me talk about adrenals before. Remember that video I did about a year ago where I started to pound down my door and I jumped out the window? If you haven't seen that one, it's on the channel. Check it out. Irritability, that's usually brain stuff. Mood swings, that can also be brain stuff. And then weight gain is usually thyroid stuff. So what I'm asking us to consider when we talk about polycystic ovarian syndrome is that it's not just the ovaries, and it's actually your endocrine system. And you might not know what your endocrine system is, so I'll explain this to you. It's a group of organs that all work together to make hormones. So inside of your body, it includes, if you're a woman, it includes your ovaries, and it includes your adrenal glands and parts of your brain, and it includes your thyroid. It also includes your uterus. All those parts of your body work together to maintain a hormonal balance, and they make up your endocrine system. So the reason that we see PCOS in women and not in men, or I should say that we don't see a male equivalent of PCOS, actually comes down to this part right here, the uterus. What I'll tell you is clinically what I see affecting women dealing with PCOS most commonly is fungus, or am I going to write this? heavy, toxic metals inside of the body, specifically in the uterus, because fungus thrives in a dark, warm, moist environment. And men don't have the equivalent of a uterus. 
The uterus is a dark, warm, moist environment. So it is the perfect breeding ground for fungus. And that is one of the reasons that we don't see a male equivalent of PCOS. So when we're working on it, typically we're going to do something that helps the immune system combat fungal stress. We're going to support the body's natural mechanisms that remove toxins. And we're not just going to look at ovaries. We're going to consider that ovaries are one piece of a larger puzzle. They are one bit of a system. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it helps clear up some of the confusion about PCOS and maybe gave you a little glimmer of hope if you're dealing with it. And if you know somebody dealing with it, please share this video with them. Any way we can help, we'd love to. Have a great day.